All right, so let's go into our simulation. You can play against colleagues by clicking multiplayer internet brings you into the network lobby. You can configure games. You can host as blue team, host as red team. We're going to look at single player. Playing single player, you're actually going against the computer AI, our red team, blue team AI, which simulates playing against another blue team or red team human. Let's take a look at the blue team first. From here, you can select your network environment. All right, so when you play the blue team, you're obviously simulating the network defenders and the simulation or the game is played as a turn-based game, which means you're gonna take your turn, play your actions, then you pass your turn, and then the other team or the red team, in this case, the red team will take their turn and pass the turn back. The way that you play the game is by playing actions, which we'll get into in just a second. All of the actions have a cost, just like in real life. They're going to cost money, staff, and time. In this case, time is represented through the number of turns that you have, in this case, 75, and a turn timer. In this case, we're at 15 minutes uh, for demo purposes so that I don't run out of time, but in most cases, the default is three minutes per turn. All of these are completely configurable. You can change these in the settings, which we'll get into a little bit later. And just like in real life, you have limited resources you have to contend with. So you have a limited budget, uh, you have a limited staff. In this case, for some people, three staff may be a lot. We click on our network environment. We'll see that this is the network that we're dealing with. And if we want to play actions to start defending this network or putting out security controls and policies, we have an action tree. This action tree represents all of the different actions as a blue team that you can take. And what you'll notice is that it's very detailed, but not technical. And what we mean by that is there's nothing command line in this simulation. You don't have to worry about command line, firewall configuration, writing scripts, getting into the details and the technical aspect of cybersecurity. But all of the concepts are here, such as putting out your policies and procedures, developing those, deploying firewalls, deploying intrusion detection systems, all of your incident response actions that you'll take. So you'll find every Everything here that you'll see in a real life cybersecurity program that you have to worry about when it comes to defending your network. If there's a concept here that you're not sure about what it is either in real life or what it does in the game, you'll see these question marks everywhere and that's going to bring you to our wiki. And our wiki is full of not only instructions on how to play the game and what the actions do and what all the aspects in game do, but also there's a huge cybersecurity glossary or dictionary here where you can search and find and look up hundreds of different cybersecurity or real world cybersecurity concepts. You'll notice that all of the actions have a cost, just like in real life. So they'll cost any number of staff members to carry out that action, the time it takes for that action to be completed, and the monetary cost for that action. You can play the actions from here. So we just played the action to install the gateway firewall. So we see that here, it's queued up. The actions will also be listed here by category. And you can also click on assets themselves, which give you detailed information about the assets, host name, IP address, etc., and any actions that you can play directly on that asset, such as right here, we'll go to the engineering workstation here and we'll deploy USB security. And now we'll see both of those are queued up here. You'll see two meters here. One is the threat intelligence meter and the other one is the profit and loss or production meter. And both of these are tied to win conditions. There's different ways that you can win the game if you're playing as a game instead of a straight simulation. The threat intelligence meter will display your threat intelligence score and you can gain threat intelligence points throughout the game by doing several different things that contribute to that, such as gathering forensics whenever you're responding to an incident or a compromised asset, your threat intelligence score will also go up when you use your threat monitoring to actually discover attacks or compromises. The profit and loss or production meter is directly related to the performance of your company and how cybersecurity affects that. So for example, if one or more of your devices are compromised, then you'll see that profit and loss meter start to go down. And if the red team gets that meter down in the red for five or more consecutive turns, then the red team wins. 
Each turn you can continue to play actions as long as you have the resources to do so. So let's go ahead and also create some policies and procedures. Now we no longer have staff available. You'll see the money and the staff have been subtracted. And now we'll end our turn and that will commit our actions. All right, it's our turn again. The red team has taken their turn. At the beginning of each turn, you'll see different notifications. It lets you know the things that you've done the previous turn, if it was good, if it was bad, and it gives you further information about how that pertains to the simulation. You'll notice that in the previous turn, we actually installed our firewall and there it is. There's our firewall installed there. We can also look at our action queue to see what actions have been completed and what actions are still pending. Another thing about the simulation is that you'll notice there are multiple attack vectors that you have to contend with just like in real life. So not only do you have available to you all of the cybersecurity controls and policies, but you also have physical security controls because the red team can attack you in three different ways. They can attack you in direct cyber attacks. They can attack you physical, go on site to get access to your systems and also social engineering. So you have things like two-factor authentication, security awareness training, and more to be able to deal with social engineering threats. The simulation also has a lot of back-end correlations that simulate real life, such as the Active Directory servers and mail servers. And so if the red team is able to compromise things like the Active Directory server, they can have access to credentials, which would make future attacks easier, password attacks easier on other assets, attacking things like an engineering workstation and a control system gives you access to programmable logic controllers or PLCs. So there's a lot of aspects that simulate real life. And another thing are remote users. You'll notice throughout the simulation that these remote users will appear and disappear as they log in and log out of the network, just like they would in real life. All right, we fast forwarded here a little bit. You'll notice that we have our network segmented and we also have these yellow shields everywhere. And what that means is that we've done a vulnerability assessment. We found vulnerabilities. So we can actually go and click on the shields and see the different vulnerabilities that we have that we need to start patching. And so there's a multitude of different ways that you'll handle vulnerabilities and vulnerability management, just like in real life. So you may have to harden your systems. You may have to patch your systems. So for example, on this firewall, we'll see here, we actually have default credentials enabled. So we'll need to change those default credentials. We can update the firmware. If we check another system, we'll check the engineering workstation because that's a pretty critical system. We know that we have outdated antivirus. So an interesting fact here in the simulation is how we take into account industrial control systems, just like real life. If you do things in your industrial control systems environment that you shouldn't be doing, such as treating them like regular systems, you could actually damage them. And that's what we've done here. We've ran a vulnerability assessment, an active vulnerability assessment, and we've managed to knock over our PLC here. And since that's affecting the production systems, you'll notice that our production meter is actually starting to go down. And from here, we can start to develop out our cybersecurity program further by implementing threat monitoring, putting in more policies and procedures, more security controls. And at some point, if we do end up having a compromised system or an incident, then we would enter our incident response mode. And we have a lot of different aspects available to us, such as replacing assets, trying to clean an asset, restoring from backup. So hopefully you have backup systems in place. You can start creating restore points and restore from backup. So pretty much anything that you have available to you in real life incident response, you'd be doing here. That would actually lead into our tabletop exercises, which we'll get into a little bit later.